Okay, so well, first of all, I'd like to thanks uh, to thank the organizers for uh, you know, despite all the odds, uh, managing to put up the conference. So thanks uh, for hosting us in all, all these different fashions. Okay, so um, uh, as uh, Emmanuel uh, said, I'm presenting work uh, done in collaboration with Andrea Bracciali from the University of Stirling and Ronald De Han from the University of Amsterdam. Okay, so the focus of the paper is on uh, essentially the sort of consensus model that is used by blockchains like uh, by system like Ripple and Stellar. So these are um, uh, systems that have been quite influential, uh, I think in terms of market capitalization, if I'm not wrong, uh, Ripple is the fourth and Stellar the 70th uh, uh, largest blockchain company. So they have quite some um, uh, influence, but on the other hand, they had received relatively uh, little uh, attention from, um, you know, academic, uh, from the academic circles. And uh, also there are some uh, strong criticism about such system because effectively, even though they, uh, well, they present themselves as uh, somewhat, somewhat open uh, blockchain system, they're in fact uh, running as per permission systems at the moment. On the other hand, they are very clear about the, uh, the, ultimate, the ultimate goal in kind of managing to lift their approach to uh, a, a real a permissionless setting. So we focused on them uh, because we thought there were some interesting uh, theoretical uh, questions behind the, the sort of consensus model they use. And uh, uh, furthermore, uh, sort of, um, uh, we consider that type of consensus model is particularly interesting to be uh, uh, investigated by using uh, economic theory uh, tools. So the questions I'm, uh, basically the question where we try to uh, uh, address in the paper, consider, uh, consist in the uh, in, uh, understanding the, the inherent limitation, or if you we should extend to which decentralization, uh, 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 so a permissionless approach to consensus is possible in, uh, that, in the consensus model followed by uh, systems like Ripple and Stellar. So the um, underlying uh, model that they use is what is sometimes called a peer-to-peer -peer trust network. Uh, there, are several, there are several terminology going around, uh, but the key idea is that the nodes in the system kind of designate, ideally in an autonomous fashion, which other nodes in the system they trust. Okay, so uh, you can think really of a picture like this, uh, where uh, any, uh, every node designates which other nodes is actually listening to and trusting. So this is uh, the, uh, the kind of main strategy that these systems, uh, systems like Ripple and Stellar use to uh, achieve some level of civil proofness. Okay, it's the uh, really peer-to-peer -peer trust network uh, paradigm. So they select, uh, every node designates which other nodes to trust. And at the same time, uh, it designates a quota or a threshold, uh, which has to be met among the, uh, the nodes it trusts for its own opinion to be determined. So you can think of if a quota of trusted nodes uh, agree on a value, uh, for instance, uh, so in my talk, I will actually use just binary values for simplicity. The, if a quota of trusted nodes agree on whether to record a transaction or not, then the node that it's listening to those nodes settles its value on that agreed value. Okay, so that's uh, the idea, say, of validation. Now, the question in this, uh, in this setting is, uh, what well, consensus essentially means all honest nodes agreeing in a, in, in, in a stable fashion uh, through, uh, uh, through the uh, trust network uh, they, uh, um, they build. Okay, so let's move net then to, a, uh, to an abstraction, uh, which we call the Byzantine trust networks, BTN. So this is directly in, uh, really following fairly closely 
for instance, the sort of mathematical structure that one would find also uh, in the uh, stellar white paper, for instance. So we have a set of nodes. We have a, the set of honest nodes. And then for every uh, member of H, of capital H, so for every uh, honest node, we assign, uh, we have a trust set. So it's the uh, subset of nodes that is it's trusted uh, by I. Finally, for every honest node, node hi, uh, we determine, uh, we, uh, the Byzantine Trust Network determines a quota. Okay, that's the quota I was mentioning in the previous slides. It's what would determine the node uh, uh, for, uh, to validate a, a precise value. The quota we use here are above 0 0.75 which is what we, uh, well, uh, what, for instance, we observe in Ripple. Okay, Ripple sets that quota, quota to uh, 0 0.8. Okay, so we try to um, provide a slightly more general analysis. There, is a, there are good reasons for setting a quota, uh, which is not lower by 0 0.25, but I, I will not get to all the details in the talk. Okay, so, Abstractly, you can think of nodes making binary decisions. So should a transaction be included or not in the ledger? Uh, and they do that under the influence of the nodes they trust. Okay, so if enough trusted nodes have opinion X, then that opinion X is validated by the node. Of course, Byzantine nodes can reveal any opinion to any honest node. Uh, so Byzantine, uh, that's how we, we think here of Byzantine nodes. So honest nodes basically uh, hold a binary opinion, if you wish. This opinion is influenced by uh, uh, the, the nodes they trust. And Byzantine nodes uh, can reveal uh, any opinion to every to any node who of course, listens, uh, listens to them. Okay, now I make a shift from uh, that, uh, this uh, kind of distributed computing sort of uh, structure to uh, a, a very similar structure that has been studied in economic theory, which goes under the name of command games. So in a command game, uh, is uh, it's very similar structure. Uh, well, apart from the Byzantine nodes, but uh, if you put them there in the in the uh, in the structure, then what we get is something uh, very close to uh, command uh, to um, uh, BTN to Byzantine Trust Network. So we have a set of nodes, capital N. We have a set of honest uh, nodes, capital H. We have a set of trusted nodes, and then we have this calligraphic uh, C which essentially is just uh, in the command games literature, it would be uh, defined simply as a set of uh, players or set of nodes in this case, that if they agree, they can determine my opinion. Okay, so it's a terminology from, uh, uh, from, uh, from that literature from game theory would be the se a set of winning coalitions for uh, agent or for node I. Of course, in, a, uh, in this case, what is a winning coalition? So what is the coalition that can determine my opinion is just given by the size of that coalition. So calligraphic C is the set of, uh, uh, of nodes, which a set of nodes in uh, among the ones uh, that I trust that uh, have a size that meets the uh, quota of age of I, of node I. Okay, okay. so in, uh, in again, in game theory terminology, that essentially means a command game is simply a set of players or nodes. And to each such player, I assign a simple game. So a set of winning coalitions. And uh, this theory was de developed by Hu and Shapley uh, in the early 2000s. Okay, so we're, we'll be using this, uh, these structures as a, as a bridge to use ideas uh, from uh, that literature that could, uh, well, we argue can shed some light on uh, on the working of uh, those on system like like Ripple and Stellar. In fact, what I call here command game is pretty much something that you uh, literally would find also in the Stellar white paper as uh, referred to uh, uh, referred to as a federated Byzantine agreement system, so FBAS. It's the same really mathematical structure. Okay, so now let me move to uh, the idea of safety. In, uh, in the Byzantine trust networks. 
So you can think of a fork here simply as being modeled as uh, the situation in which two honest nodes validate opposite values. So two honest nodes have access to uh, uh, a set of trusted nodes, a set of nodes that is trusted by them that is a size large enough to convince them of the of opposite values. So we can say that uh, BTN then is safe if such situation does cannot occur. Okay, you can think of then just the picture of a, a forked uh, BTN uh, would be like this. Okay, so we have two nodes, they listen to different sets that there are which are sufficient to convince them of different values. Okay, of course, interestingly, this, this notion is really a kind of uh, quite general abstract. It's, it's protocol independent. So it, it, I haven't talked yet about how uh, precisely the, 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 uh, uh, the consensus protocol would be run on this network. So it's uh, this notion of safety is proper really of the, uh, if you wish, the infrastructure of the, uh, of the trust network. Okay, then a question, natural question arises of, of about the necessary structural conditions that can ensure safety. Okay, so that's what we are, I'm, I'm moving to uh, now. And uh, this is, of course, directly related to the level of decentralization uh, that can be admitted in such a system. So here I will give you, uh, uh, I'll go very quickly to some theorems that we uh, discuss in the paper. So uh, in this theorem, we say, okay, in a uniform BTN, so a uniform BTN is a, a, a bit of trust network where every quota is the same, okay? So if we fix for everybody a quota of that, uh, of in, in, in the range given here, 0, 0.75, 0, 0.8, uh, safety actually can be shown to imply the existence of nodes that are trusted by all honest nodes. So in a sense, we can prove that if we, under the assumption that everybody has this, uh, uses the same quotas uh, in that in a given range, then effectively we are requiring uh, uh, the existence of, of nodes that are trusted by all, all honest nodes. So it's a, and important to notice is that's actually a setup that applies directly to Ripple. So in a sense, uh, um, uh, and in a sense, this really tells us, uh, gives us a theoretical justification for why Ripple is actually working uh, as it is doing uh, currently, as far as I know, by means of uh, indeed a set of um, uh, central set of uh, nodes that, that then run consensus for the whole, uh, for the whole system. So it's a centralized permissioned uh, setup. So, um, and well, this uh, in, in the bullets, you see a kind of a sketch of how the reasoning goes here. So we, we can show that safety implies that any two trust sets uh, should overlap for uh, that fraction one minus Q where Q is the quota over Q uh, of, the, of their combined size. And uh, if all pairs uh, of trust set overlap for at least uh, one fourth of their combined size, then their intersection should be not empty. So that's uh, essentially how the uh, how the reasoning goes behind this result. So taking a, a negative uh, kind of perspective, you may say that, well, if this is the setup, then fully decentralized consensus is actually not really possible in, in, in this setting. And with fully decentralized consensus, I really mean uh, uh, full freedom for the nodes to determine who to trust. And as I said, that's not the case for, for Ripple where everybody now has to link to, uh, uh, um, to select the trusted nodes between a specified uh, set uh, provided by Ripple itself. Okay, so what happens if we lift non, uh, if we lift uniformity? So if we really allow everybody to kind of, uh, um, uh, uh, set their own quotas. So that's the case, for instance, for Stellar. Uh, so Stellar, in principle, gives more freedom to know than, in fact, it, it stemmed out of uh, the initial Ripple proposition. So 
a simple observation we can uh, immediately make is that a ne necessary condition for safety in that, uh, in, uh, in, in that setting is that I need to self-sufficient, and I will explain what that means in a moment, a set of nodes should in intersect. So self-sufficient set of nodes is what are called the Quora in Stellar. And uh, you can think of them uh, as this. So in the picture here in the bottom right of the slide, uh, well, that, that can be thought of as a quorum. So a quorum is a set of nodes that contains winning coalition for every member of the, node, of the uh, set. So it's a kind of set that if it agrees, it can agree stably uh, in, uh, uh, in validating uh, value for the chain. So what we show in the paper is that, uh, well, of course, so if we, if we look at this core, so this kind of self-sufficient -self set of nodes for the, the determination of, um, uh, of agreement, uh, obviously, uh, if we have Quora that don't intersect, we can easily create uh, uh, forks in the system. So a necessary uh, condition for um, the absence of forks is that Quora always intersect. Uh, so that always the intersection of two Quora always contain, or is always uh, non-empty. Okay, so that's a, that's a condition that was um, clearly stated in, um, uh, in Stellar, uh, starting from the white paper. And uh, it is a condition in a sense, uh, it, it, it can be thought of being problematic in several ways, but where we try to put our finger on is the uh, intractability of determining uh, uh, whether uh, uh, given uh, a Byzantine trust network, we can check whether uh, the quorum intersection property holds. Okay, so quorum intersection here in the, in the statement of this theorem means, okay, it's a decision problem in which I give you uh, a Byzantine trust network and I ask you, can you check whether, uh, uh, whether there are any Quora in the uh, in the system that don't uh, intersect. So uh, why is this an interesting problem? Because if uh, if we uh, we want the system to be safe, any individual decision by the nodes to select uh, who they want to trust should somehow guarantee quorum intersection. So um, and in other words, we are putting on the nodes uh, a requirement to guarantee a kind of global safety property of the network. And uh, our result shows that in fact, this decision problem is uh, computationally hard. So it's it can be complete. So it's in principle intractable. That of course doesn't mean that it's not feasible in practice. Uh, it, just, uh, it just says that it is, um, it is uh, potentially a stumbling block in, in the pathway to, to provide full decentralization to the system. Okay, last uh, uh, part of my talk, I want to talk about uh, the problem of influence. Okay, so we looked at uh, uh, the problem of decentralization from the point of view of, well, uh, the existence, the possible existence of nodes that have to be trusted by all nodes in order to guarantee safety, we looked at the problem of uh, uh, guarantee necessary condition for uh, for safety as being intractable uh, computational problems. Now I want to look at what kind of, uh, um, uh, uh, I want to kind of show you how one can understand influence or power in systems like uh, Ripple and Stellar. So um, this is kind of a, Understanding influence in this type of blockchain is, in a sense, uh, trickier than what happens in proof of work or proof of stake, uh, for instance, blockchain, where you can say you can think, okay, the influence of a node in a system in proof of work, roughly, is the share uh, of computational power the system uh, the, the node invests in the system, and a similar reasoning you can make for uh, proof of stake. It is, however, unclear how to quantify influence on the uh, uh, on the blockchain in systems based uh, on um, Byzantine trust networks. 
like Ripple and Stellar. So in the paper, we make a proposition, we make a proposal uh, on uh, how uh, uh, influence could be understood in such systems, which uh, builds on the idea of command game that I gave you at the beginning. So as, uh, as, I, uh, as I showed, okay, we had in, uh, as I showed you with theorem one, uh, we had that safety in uniform uh, BTN implies the existence of all trusted nodes. So, but what does it mean concretely? Okay, in terms of the influence that such nodes can have on, uh, uh, on consensus values. Uh, as I said, this is uh, harder to be determined as in uh, proof of work or proof of stake. So let's have a look at uh, again, uh, BTNs and the, the structure I gave you uh, earlier here phrased as a, a command game. Okay, this capital L uh, capital calligraphic C as I said, uh, can be thought of what in game theory is called a simple game. Okay, so it's a set of nodes uh, with a set uh, of winning coalitions. The idea is that uh, th those winning coalitions are coalitions that can determine the value of I. So they can determine the value that I validates uh, um, in the system. Now, if we think of those as games, we can apply um, what are called uh, in, the, in the theory of simple, simple games or theory of voting as well, power indices. So here in this case, I uh, just quickly give um, uh, the definition of what is called Penrose Banzaf index, which essentially counts the number of times in which uh, an, uh, each node is pivotal in determining the value of i. So the, so the frequency of uh, in which I on its own can, so J on its own can determine the value of I. Now, if we, if we take, uh, so now the, the details are not so important, but what we can get to is that um, by using uh, power indices like Banzaf, but there are many others, we can in fact construct uh, what's called an influence matrix, uh, which is a stochastic matrix in this case. So the idea of this matrix is if the way, the way in which you can read an entry I, for instance, I to one in such a matrix, it tells uh, is as follows. I to one gives me uh, the power of agent or node one with respect to a node two. So node one will be trusted by two and will have a certain influence in determining the, uh, the value that two can validate uh, in the system. So this, uh, the rows in, the, in such a matrix will essentially describe how the influence is for the agent or the node in the row is distributed over uh, all the other uh, nodes in the system. And it will sum up to one. Now, such, uh, such a matrix then describes uh, uh, the, um, uh, the kind of direct influence that the nodes that I trust has on, the, uh, on uh, I itself. Now, what we would be interested in is understanding, uh, so moving from this simple kind of picture that is given directly by the BTN interpreted as a, a command game, to move from there to an understanding of what is, if you wish, the long range influence in the system. Because of course, if, I'm, if a node uh, J is trusted by I, and uh, in turn J trusts a node K, this K will have an indirect influence on I. So to capture this idea, uh, uh, we can simply take uh, the limit of such a stochastic matrix, of course, when it exists, there are uh, limits does not always exist, but in, in the situation in which it exists, I can take such a limit to understand the kind of long range influence that every node has on every other node. So um, taking this, uh, uh, the, this, uh, this idea, we can determine that if we take, if we consider a safe uh, BTN, if we consider a safe Byzantine network, so a Byzantine a trust network that does not uh, allow for, uh, um, for forking, such influence matrix will have a certain property which is called regularity and which essentially means that uh, it is a matrix in which such a, a long range limit influence exists. 
we have furthermore that we can uh, we can also say uh, that it is fully regular if there exists at most one Byzantine node, where full regularity means that not only that the limit exists, but that all rows in the network are identical, all rows in the matrix are identical, which intuitively means that uh, uh, every agent, so every node in the network is subject to the same pattern of influence by all other nodes. So what does this uh, theorem tells us in practice? Uh, so essentially, it gives us these two uh, um, uh, messages with respect to uh, uh, Byzantine network in the case of Ripple and Stellar. So if we have a situation in which there is no Byzantine node, okay, so H, capital H equals N, and then this, uh, we, we know by theorem one that there should exist still nodes that are trusted by everybody, that's implied by safety. And well, the theorem then also, also tells us that these all trusted nodes are the only ones in the system that have a positive long range influence. So they are the only ones that can determine uh, the value of consensus. If they, um, uh, if there are Byzantine nodes, then actually those Byzantine nodes are the only ones that have a long range positive influence. And this by a simple artifact, because uh, of course Byzantine nodes uh, are not influenced by any other node. So they are the kind of, um, uh, uh, the, so they are the, the nodes where the entries in the matrix would uh, for uh, equal, uh, the, uh, in the diagonal of the matrix will, will be one. Okay, so they are only influenced by themselves. And uh, as such, they are the only ones that can uh, have a long range influence. Okay, so I'll just give a quick, um, uh, summary. So what we tried to provide here was an analysis of uh, inherent uh, like theoretical limitations of consensus that is based on the trust network paradigm or open quorum system. Uh, and we looked in particular the problem of decentralization. So the extent to which such a model of consensus could be decentralized. And we looked at, uh, at uh, an attempt to give uh, put a number on the influence of players or nodes in such systems. So to understand what effect uh, nodes have, what power they have in determining uh, consensus. And of course, well, this is uh, being, uh, preaching to the converted, but uh, I try to also show how um, an economic theory toolbox, in this case, the, idea, the ideas from command games and from power indices, uh, can be used for uh, the analysis of systems of this type. Okay, and I'll conclude here. Thank you.